Hi guys, welcome back. So reporting is a section that you should be very familiar with and it is crucial to the success of your campaign. There's numerous different ways that you can report using Google Ads. Google Ads actually has its own built-in reporting framework that you can use to set up various different reports. Um, you can use Microsoft Excel for reporting, but today I'm going to show you through how to set up a Google Ads reporting dashboard using Google Data Studio. So let's dive in. Hi guys, welcome back to the course. So today we are going to be talking through Google Ads um, Data Studio. It's a really useful platform to use to look at your overall performance of your Google Ads activity and um, make it a bit more visual, either for yourself or if you are presenting back to clients. So in order to get to um, this style of report, if you want to pop into Google um, data studio.google.com and it will navigate you to um, some options to open up and start a report. I am going to um, give you a link to this template at the end of this course. So feel free to use this one once we're done, or you can go ahead and make your very own data studio dashboard report. So to get started, um, there's quite a few different um, areas of functionality. So we can add in like different metrics that we want to look at. You can add in images, you can add graphs, etc., text, whatever you want to your report. I'm going to build a report that I feel works quite well from a report inspector for Google Ads. Um, and like you say, you'll be able to change it yourself once you've learned the basic setups. So first up, um, I've left a little area here to pop in your brand logo. So whoever you were doing the report for, it's a nice place to pop in the logo there for you. Now, how I usually um, structure the report is at the top, I will break down exactly um, the budget that I have for the account. So usually a monthly budget. So this will just be a kind of a text based um, piece to the to the report. So you just drop in some text here, add it in. Um, so I'm going to put monthly budget equals, um, let's just say a thousand pound. There we go. So we've got that nice and tidy. We know what our budget is for the month. And then we can kind of refer back to it um, and see where we're, where we're kind of trending against what we're spending at the moment. So in order to add in some metrics for the dashboard, you'll have to add a data source. Um, I've already linked one up for this um, demonstration, but in order to add a data source, basically you want to be adding your own Google Ads um, link. So to do that, you pop into resource and then manage added data sources. So here, this is the source that we're working with at the moment. This is the one that I've added. When you do, or if you use this template, you'll be able to pop in here and just remove this source and add your own instead. So if you click on add data source, you have all these different options of sources that you can add. For this case specifically, we're looking at Google Ads. So you'll pop in here, click on your account, whatever one you want to link to. I'm just going to click an example and click add. And then all it'll do is it'll give you an option to click the overall account fields. Um, yeah, I'm going to add this to the report. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. So add to the report and then click add. And then you'll see that source has now been added. So what that means is now that the source is added, we can pull data from that specific account, that Google Ads account. Now I'm just going to remove this because I don't want duplicate um, sources on my report. Um, and then I'm just going to continue with the build. So the first thing that I want to add is going to be um, a date range segment. In order to do that, you've got some control options here. So you add a control and you can add this date range control. I'm just going to pop this up here in the top corner. So this is where what will happen is whatever your date is here, that's the data that will be shown within the report. So I'm just going to kind of put in a default date range for um, the last 30 days as an example. And we'll go so we can change that. It's got a lot of predefined options. So you can select from last year, last quarter, last month, etc. Or you can actually fix it um, to whatever date that you want it to be. So for example, if we wanted to do a monthly and we wanted to look at April specifically, we could do the first to the 30th of April. And then what's going to happen with that is it'll just constantly update the data every day as we move through the month. I often do this so that um, you know it's uh, the report's always up to date every time I log in. So we'll use this example as we as we run through this report. Okay, so next up, I want to know, obviously, I've got my monthly budget. I want to know how much I've spent. So in order to do this, I'm going to add a chart element. 
and there's lots of different things you can add um like graphs etc but i think one of the easiest way to display visually kind of what you're looking at from a cost perspective and some of the other metrics is to use what's called a scorecard so we'll pop that in and scorecards basically show uh, like a sum of a specific metric that you've collected it's defaulted to clicks but what we're going to do is we're just dropping the data source over here and we can adjust this to our cost so we just find it in the list change the cost and i can say i've spent 784 pound so far this month and um, you can play around with the style however you want it to look i usually center it so everything's in the middle um you can change your colors etc if you want but i'm not going to go into too much detail with that um you can play around with this yourself kind of in your own time but there we go we've got the basic um referral for you know cost versus um our monthly budget so i'm going to tidy that up and just make sure it's kind of aligned there we go so if for example my budget was a thousand pound for april and we're only 11 days into the month um i would say that we're definitely trending a bit beyond where we want to be um based on the on the budget and the cost so luckily for us it's it's not actually the exact that isn't actually the actual monthly budget but i'm just giving you an example here anyway so then you can kind of um keep an eye on you know what you've got left for the month so you can also add in kind of custom columns as well and um, so for real quickness you can copy and paste this and then you could change this um to your own specific um field so you can create a field and you might want to call this um remaining budget so this can just be um cost so we'll find um, and then minus i'm uh, sorry it'll be your budget so a thousand minus your cost there we go and then you can apply that and it should pop up with however much is left there we go so now you've got a remaining budget column as well so this gives you a really good way to look at kind of how you're pacing in the month so you've got monthly budget what you spent the day and what you've got available for the rest of the month um, and it just gives you and, and you can kind of divide that out and you say you know you could go even more granular and say you know what's me daily spend available um so you could go your remaining budget divided by yeah, your main budget divided by 30 days, so this is how much you spend, should be spending each day per month, for example. Then you can keep an eye on different different trends throughout the month. Next up, we're going to do a bit of a, an overview of the overall um, performance across the account. So I'm just going to pop in an overview section here. I've broken it out by this white dash, as you can see. Um, but you can play around with whatever you want it to look like and um, so I've just broken it down like this and then I'm going to add in all of the main KPIs uh, key performance indicators that I want to be able to see clearly and report on at ease so I'm going to use the the same um, scorecard that I had before for cost just real quick I'm just going to copy and paste it pop that in so what I want to say first is I'm going to kind of I'm going to build it as a flow similar to how you'd read your data so the first thing that you get from your Google Ads activity is your impressions. So I want my impressions to show first. Then I want to say, okay, from that, how many clicks did I achieve? So I'm gonna pop in my clicks. And then I wanna look at the performance KPI for these in terms of click through rate. So I'm gonna pop that in, CTR. And you can add in you know, any, any performance metric that you wanna look at specifically. Um, I'm going to put the top line stats in for this example and um, but you can play around with it as much as you want and change it as much as you like. Next up I'm going to pop in um, the main thing that I want to look at for this account which is going to be my conversions and then to align with conversions you're going to want things like your cost per conversion and your conversion rate to understand kind of how your account's performing overall. And remember at the moment this data is top level account data so you basically look at it what um what you've achieved in terms of the overall um that's the one conversion rate sorry it'll be this one what your accounts achieved overall so it's not segmented in any way by campaign keyword or device or anything like that this is literally a top level view but we can put segmentations on and i will show you that shortly yep so cost per conversion we're going to pop in as well 
which will be um, you can have cost per conversion. I always refer to cost per conversion, and then finally I want um, I'll put my cost in again, even though I know we've got it at the top, but just for another reference and like a top line view, we'll pop that in, and then finally I want my CBC as well, cost per click. And you can see it just falls slightly out of line here, so it needs tidying up a little bit from a, a visual perspective, but you get the general idea. So I can just move this along slightly. There we go. There we go. So you've got your top level stats now. So now when you log into your data um, studio dashboard, you can see a really quick glance. All right. What's what I've spent so far this month? How much have I got left? What are my main KPIs? So click the it looking good, conversion rate strong, cost per conversion, £15. For, the, for this data and this client specifically, I know that this is a really strong cost per conversion for them. Their target is 20, so they perform particularly well. And then if you want to look into kind of more granularly how things are performing in comparison to a previous period, you can add um, like a comparison section on. So what we'll do is on the date, range that you've got selected here we've got auto now what this means is it's automatically going to look at this um date range that you've got as a as a control so that's fine that's what we want but we want to add the comparison on as well now what you can do as a comparison is you can do the previous period the previous year or you can do a fixed comparison we're going to do the previous period so it'll look at the same time frame as what's been what's been running to date so i apply that it's going to look at, so this is the 1st to the 30th of April, so it's going to compare to the, the previous month, basically. So it'll be the 1st to the 31st of March. And what you'll see here is um, automatically it's got these little um, indicators of up or down in terms of performance. Now, if you're comparing a full month's worth of data to a previous full month, which we are in this case, the 1st to the 30th of April compared to the whole of March, you're going to see a massive drop, or at least you should potentially if, you tr if you're trending kind of a, a typical pace in your overall traffic, etc. It's what you'd expect, but you wouldn't want to necessarily see drops in things like your conversion rate um, or inflation in your cost per conversion, for example. Um, so it just gives you a good idea of kind of, of how the account's looking. If you want to change it so it's more accurate, you could do, um, so for example, if we look at the last seven days and apply that, that's now going to automatically compare to the previous seven days and you'll see kind of more realistic adjustments in terms of the data that's been that's been pulled through here. So you see everything's trending a little bit more similar. There's small fluctuations in the traffic. Conversions are down quite a bit. So for this client specifically, I'd be questioning, okay, what's happened in terms of the conversion volume here because conversion rates dropped massively in the seven day period. As you know, as Google Ads ex uh, experts, you know, we do see fluctuations in overall performance, especially on a week by week basis. So a typical kind of weekly report can say, you know, can sometimes pull out things that look concerning when they might not be. So just remember to analyze your data carefully. I'm just gonna drop this back into my original view um, of my fixed date range and leave it as is. So you can see they've all changed back. But what this will do now is that you've got a comparison is it'll help you. I'm just going to make them a little bit bigger because we've got the, um, the comparison there now. It'll help you when you come to do a commentary. So you can really easily say, OK, so so far in April, we've seen click through rate improved by 15%. Uh, it's really good. And then you'll go into kind of doing your own analysis. All right, where's this improvement in click through rate come from? Has it come from, you know, we've added loads of new negative keywords or has it come from we've pushed more budget into a, a better performing um, campaign? Is it because we've done some new ad copy testing and overall click through rates boosted? There's all these different um, reasons why click through might have improved, but this gives you kind of a top level view for you then go and further investigate into. So what I normally do here is I'll create a text box underneath. And this will be where I write my, my top line commentary for the performance. So under here, I'll be writing exactly what's going on. So I'll be talking about, you know, impressions have decreased by X amount so far this month. This is due to um, optimizations across the account, including negative keyword implementation 
kind of reduction on high impression, low converting keywords, for example. Yep. Um, so you can go ahead and write exactly what you need to do here, and kind of break down your overall performance, go through each metric, you can talk about what you your spend is today compared to where it should be, how you're pacing for the month. So we're currently pacing at 80% of spend, for example. Um, we will look to reduce this in line with budget targets. Da, 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 da. You know as the experts what you need to be writing, what you need to be looking for. Now next up, we want to give a more, um, a more granular kind of visualization in terms of the performance so you can either do this below the text or you can do it below the the um scorecards i'll put it um below the scorecards for this example um just to give you some visualization of performance so we're going to pop in some graphs so we've got charts here so what we can do is we can look to add for example um a time series chart so we'll pop that in and for example we might want to compare um, clicks and click through rates. So just literally add it in here. You've got your clicks. And then you can add a secondary metric here and pop CTR. And you'll see it's starting to, to map on the graph. Now what we'll do is um, in terms of the style, if you want to kind of, if you want it to show um, on a different trend line, you need to put it on a secondary axis. So you'll see on the on the style here on the right, series two, we want to put it on the right axis. So then you can see click through it. Otherwise, you know, with clicks and click through it, the, the metrics are so different that it, you wouldn't be able to see it clearly unless you did break this out. And what you'll see as well is because our date range currently is from the 1st to the 30th, this graph will populate as the days go by. So right now it's only populating up to the 11th because that's how many days have gone and it'll just continue to trend like that. So this gives you and your potential client a really quick and vi easy visual um, in terms of the performance. So they can see how clicks are trending. They can see there was a big drop in click through rate here. So that's probably going to spike some questions. What happened? You know, you need to be there. You need to be, have, you know, you need to be in front of any questions that might come. So being on top of your data like this allows you to look at it and say, OK, something happened here. What was it? If you don't know already, you know, because you've been making changes in the account or you haven't Maybe you haven't been in the account specifically for the last couple of days or you've been looking at the account from kind of a a more top level view of like a longer performance range. So you might have been looking at the account for the last 30 days in collection rather than isolated day periods. This helps you to identify specific day performance and whether or not there was any reason for concern. So you can then go away and say, okay, on the 6th of April, what exactly happened? Why did we see this drop in click through rate? Was it intentional? Was there a problem? Did we make a mistake? Whatever it might be, you know, this is where it gives you a chance to get in front of the client and say we've already identified this this is what we've done to fix it and so on and so forth other graphs that you may find useful you know you can use the same layout so you can just literally copy and paste it and um, you might want to have your conversion performance so i usually do graphs in line with um what i've got at the top so we've got click traffic you want your conversion in comparison to your conversion rate so you just change the date over here to conversions and then your comparison is going to be a conversion rate, like so. And here you can see how that's looking. So for us, um, on this data specifically, um, we can see that conversions since the start of the month have been trending down. So again, that 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 spikes questions. You know what's happening on the account? Why is the data trend, trending down? So this is the, all stuff that gives us a really quick visual and time to look into stuff in, into it. And report back and then finally you want to kind of add a draft for your cost performance so i typically do cost versus your average cpc and um, so i'll pop that in and remember you know you can change this to whatever you feel is more important and um, for your account specifically i'm just gonna tie that up there we go beautiful so now we've got top line stats of the overall account and then visuals in terms of time series graphs there as well. And this will help again with your commentary and reporting, you know, what you want to talk about um, overall. Now you'll see that um, when you're building this report, the default length of the report kind of crops out here. All you need to do to change that is just make sure you click on, click off any, make sure you're not clicked on any boxes. You're just on the, the background. If you go to layout, 
there's an option here for width and height. You can change the width as well if you prefer. You prefer a, long, a wider report. I typically leave it at 1,200. But if you change this to, you know, we'll put in 4,000, you'll see now that as you scroll, the report just gets longer. So you can just build this report as long as you need it to be, depending on how much information that you want to include in the report. So once you've done um, this part, you know, I would leave enough space to build out a fair bit of commentary in terms of what's going on in terms of overall performance. I usually talk about like the main things that are going on on the account, etc. Um, and then I'll leave some bits for next steps here at the bottom as well. Talk about what's coming next week, changes, optimizations, etc. Um, and then following on from that, I'm going to give a further breakdown of um, a bit of a bit of detail across the account. So we've, we've been looking very top level at the moment. Now I want to look into all right, what specific campaigns are working well. So what we can do now is add another chart element. So we're going to add a table here, and we'll just pop that in. And what this is going to show us is a breakdown of performance. And I'm going to break it down by campaign specifically for this. I'm just going to change the style slightly. Um, so we, you do this by on the on the style section. Um, on the table body, it's got row numbers, which is these. I don't want those there. I don't think they're, they're needed. So I'm going to remove those just to tidy it up a little bit. And then instead of having a breakdown by day, I'm going to pop in campaign. So then you'll start to see performance by campaign. So these are my campaigns that I put in. And remember that this date, uh, this data is fixed to your date range at the top. So this is the performance for, for April to date. So I'm going to do a similar layout as what I've got in terms of my scorecards. I want my data to flow. So I'm going to have um, impressions first and then go through, add another metric. So I'm going to pop in my clicks, click through rate, etc., and start to build up this um, table of data for my campaigns. So it's very similar to you know what you can actually see in Google Ads, and um, you can build it similar to what you would look at a Google Ads report when you're when you're in the actual interface. Um, but then it's all just in one place, easy for you to kind of scroll through the data instead of having to add filters on and things like that. Um, cast CPC. Remember, you can add pretty much anything that you want to see here within reasons. There is some limitation in terms of what you can add, um, depending on Google's kind of the way it filters data, etc. You might come across if you put something in and it's not um, eligible to run, you'll come up with kind of a, a value and it won't show. Um, so you'll just have to play around with anything that you add in to make sure that it works with, with DS Studio. Cost per conversion. There we go. So now we're starting to see the performance. Um, I'm going to style it up so it makes it a little bit easier. Pop everything central except for column one. I'll keep that to the left because that's the campaign name. But all the metrics I'm going to make central. And you change, you can play around with the sizes of the text, the colors, uh, the fonts, etc. Whatever you want uh, to make it look how you want it to look. And drag that out. And what I can do is we can make it to the campaign is bigger so you can actually see it all. So this is the performance by campaign now. So I can say really clearly how things are performing overall. And you can sort this data as well by whatever it is that you want it want it to be sorted by. So there's an option here to add a sort. Um descending, ascending. Um so let's sort it by I don't know, we'll pop, pop clicks in for an example. And then what it'll do is it'll show your campaigns in order of clicks. Um, oh, sorry, that's a secondary sort. The first one's by impressions. So if we change this to clicks and then get rid of that secondary sort, there we go. You'll see that the clicks are now sorted by um, in order of descendants. So pet exact, for example, has got the highest number of clicks in this date period. You can sort by conversion, sort by cost, whatever it is that you want to do. And then actually when you pop into view mode, so this is how you'd look when you're potentially working with a client. You can click on different columns anyway to sort it while it's in view mode. So you can say I'm sorting by conversions, sorting by conversion rates, I'm sorting by impressions. But just remember that whenever you um when you log into 
<coughs> the dashboard, it's automatically going to be defaulted to sort by clicks because that's what we've put in the data. Okay, so you've got your campaign performance. Um, you might want to add a title here to see what it is. So I would usually just copy this overview section and drag it down with me. And then I'm going to put here uh, campaign performance. And then I usually also write about how it's how it's sorted. So uh, campaign performance by clicks. Yep. So it's really clear exactly what this is showing us. And then there's lots of different things that you can break out um, table wise. So you could have you can top performing keywords, for example. So you might want to copy this whole thing, copy and paste it. I use copy and paste quite a lot, as you can probably, as you can tell. Um, I find it really useful if it's it's just going to be the same sort of layout that you want. Um, change this to keyword performance, and then in order to change this, instead of having campaign on your table, you're just going to change it on your data to keywords. So in this section here, pop in keyword, so it'll be search keyword, and as well just to make you aware that um, you can change how many rows there are in your data. Um, so you've got rows per page 100. Um, so if you were to drag this down, it'll show the first 100. But because there's 336 within the this campaign, for uh, this account, for example, there's 336 keywords, you'd still have the option to scroll across. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So when you go into view mode, when you're now live on the data, it'll scroll for the first 100. See the scrolling? And then to move through, you'll have to click the arrow. And then I'll move to the next, however many keywords. You can increase, decrease the size of it. You can change your um, number of rows that you want from, if you only want it to show the first 10, you can change it to 10. If you're happy with 100, you can keep it 100. Um, there's lots of different options. You can have it as small as just one row, or you can have it all the way up to 5,000, however you prefer to show your data. So now you're starting to kind of build a nice, report in terms of a breakdown. So you've got top level, you've got campaign view, you've got keyword view, um, you can pop things in um, more visually for like a device breakdown, for example. So I think a nice way to display um, device breakdowns is instead of in a table view, it's nice to have a like a pie chart. So in order to do that, you just add a chart type again. You see, you can either have it like this or like this. I tend to go for these style of ones. Um, so here I'm going to device break down, like so. And then you can change the data to whatever you want it to be. So instead of the keyword, we're going to change it to device. So now we we'll start seeing the device. And we can either break it, break it down however you want. This is defaulted to impressions. So you can see how many impressions are being driven by which device. So for example, 82.6% of overall impressions are coming from a mobile device. You might want to change it to your main KPI. So you might want to change it to conversions, for example, to see exactly where your conversions are coming from. You might want to show multiple different um, metrics. So you could copy and paste this data. You can have a breakdown of your conversion by device, you can have, and then alongside that you can have a breakdown of your clicks by device, for example. And then you could start understanding quite quickly, you know, do you see a higher percentage of clicks coming from mobile, but you see more conversions come from desktop, for example, and, and, and vice versa, or is it kind of as you'd expect? So in this case, 87% of traffic comes from mobile and 89% of conversions come from mobile. It's pretty, it's what you'd expect. You know, you see the same, the higher volume coming from where the traffic's coming from. But sometimes you might see that you'll have high volume of traffic coming from a specific device, but a low number of conversions. So you've got a better conversion rate on a different device to what you see on the traffic coming through. So that might mean that you need to do some optimization about your mobile landing page, for example, or your website. Um, so it's a good way to just to visualize this as well. Um, and then you might want to break things down like um, understanding the ad type performance. So again, I would use something like a table view to create my uh, visualization of performance by ad type. Um, so I'll just drag that down. So the, the world's your oyster when it comes to, to Data Studio really because you, know, you can play around with, with as much as you want. You can add, change your data, change what you're looking at. Um, what do I want? Add type, for example. 
So this will show, is it expanded text ads? Is it responsive search ads? Um, is it call only ads, for example? This will give us a breakdown of what's working and what's not. So in this case, we're running expanded RSA and dynamic. So we can see the performance of each individual ad type. We can see that click-through rate's much better across ATAs. Conversion rate is actually slightly better on responsive search ads, stronger on dynamic search ads, but obviously you've got to bear in mind the volume coming through as well. I think we've got a good conversion rate across all. Cost efficiency, much better than what ATA is, so £13 pound versus £24. So this is where you can start understanding, you know, what's working better across the account. Can we push more into um, ATAs? Should we be moving more into RSAs? Whatever it might be. Um, gives you a, a quick breakdown here of how you want to look at that. So what I'm going to do now is I will share a link in this um, course for you to the templated version of the Data Studio report. So you can go in and you can play around and make your own make your own copy and play around with it. Any questions, let us know. Be happy to help. Um, just remember that when you do open the link to this template, um, it will be, you know, you won't be able to edit it. It'll be a view only link. So what you'll need to do is you'll access it and it'll look something like this. Um, so when you when you get there, if you just click on file, uh, make a copy. And then what you'll need to do is change your data source to whatever it is that you want to create. So create a new data source, what we did at the beginning, click Google Ads, etc. And then make a copy and save it as whatever you want to call it. And then you can edit it. You won't be able to edit this version, just to be clear. Um, thanks, guys. I hope this has been helpful for you. And um, I'm looking forward to potentially seeing some new and inspiring Google Data Studio reports. Keep learning.